Hello then, welcome to this course on machine learning with R. My name is Valentine and I'll be your instructor. In this course, we're going to learn about various concepts in relation to machine learning and now using the R programming language. And by the end of it, you should be um, in a position where you can say that you can work on machine learning with R projects. So let's get started. Machine learning entails the creation of computer programs that are able to make human-like decisions and um, these types of programs could be either trained on historical data or not trained on historical data hence the reason why we say um, supervised learning and unsupervised learning so you have machine learning applications that we train on historical data which would refer to um, um, ones that um, pertain to supervised learning while um, ones machine learning applications that we do not um, train on data um, would um, um, entail unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, we would have two types of problems. There's regression types of problems and classification types of problems. Regression types of problems involve predicting a numerical variable, while classification types of problems um, entail predicting some sort of categorical variable. Um, so we're going to go on just um, through different um, through just different concepts in relation to, um, you know, those, both types of machine learning, um, and then we'll um, call it uh, call it um, a learning lesson. So let's um, get started. So starting off, uh, we'll get started with supervised learning. There are what are called algorithms, which are just complex mathematical operations that we can be able to use to create these machine learning applications that we have talked about. Um, and and we would call these machine learning applications models so in order to create models or those machine learning applications we need algorithms in supervised learning we have regression and classification to be able to create regression applications or regression models we need regression algorithms so let's go through a few um, to start us off, uh, to start us off in R, we normally work with um, what are called packages, and the package that we can be able to use to build machine learning models um, is called Carrot. So this is the one that we are going to um, install. I have already installed it. Um, what I'm just going to do is just load it, but you can always do the same. Um, by the way, um, you have this particular resource um, available to you, but the sample notebook workbook, uh, you may not have access to the practice workbook which have, has challenges, but if you want to learn more um, and go through practice work, you could always um, consider becoming an after work member and you'll get all those resources. So um, the first thing that we're going to do um, once we have installed Carrot, the next thing that we're going to do is to in, import the library, that the data sets that we're going to work with. And this is the data set. And our goal is to create a machine learning application a machine learning model that can be able to predict salary so that's our goal so once we have loaded the data set we can just prepare it quickly um, perform data pre-processing techniques we just remove missing values missing records um, mis records with missing values just for ease of learning and um, we also ensure that all the um, records that we have here are in a numerical format so we also ensure that we um, assign data types, appropriate data types. So for, let's example, SKUs, we also convert the data that we have into um, a numerical format that can be used by a machine learning model for training. We remove the name column, we don't need it. We also set um, seed for reproducibility. Um, this ensures that if we share our work with other people, we'll get the same, they will also get the same outcomes as we did. Say for example, they got an I got an accuracy of 80, they also get an accuracy of 80. Um, I, lastly, we also split the original data set into a training data set and a test data set. For the training data set, we use it to train a machine learning model. Um, and we set the proportion of the original data set, so that 70%, to contain um, the training records. Um, while the 30% would just um, um, be um, for the test data set. And the test data set will use it to measure how our model actually performed. So let's run that. Um, the first type of um, regression algorithm that we'll get to learn about is the linear regression algorithm. And this tends to work 
um, best this type of algorithm is much more suitable when we have relationships between the predictor um, variables or the independent variables and the target variable or the dependent variable so if you have the predictor variables which are um, just the independent variables if there are relationships between those variables and the target variable so if values of let's say one independent variable multiple independent variables increase while um, the target variable so increase or decrease then in such a situation um, there exist linear relationships and such kind of a um, regression algorithm works best in such a situation and um, we've also provided notes um, that you can go through um, in the resource that we've provided so you feel free to do that so to work with this type of regression um, algorithm we use uh, the lm function um, and then we um, this is how we want to train it so we also define the target variable and we say that we also want to train it based on the rest of the data set um, shown here um, and also um, we also define the train data set the data set that we want to use to train our model so and that's what we do um, let's run that then later we make predictions now once we have trained the model we can use it to make just predictions um, um, on the testing set uh, the test sets to just be able to um, um, assess the performance of that particular model and once we have done that we can be able to calculate the root mean square error and we should be able to see that um, we have 70 uh, 7818 which is quite bad um the closer the value of rmse is to zero the better the model this is quite far all right so moving on you can work on the challenge if you have your nafta work member um but um if you're not you could do this just go to the next section so moving on decision trees another type of algorithm that works best when the relationships in um the predictor variables are complex um or non-linear if there are no relationships um in between even those um predictor um variables then this type of algorithm works best so let's load the um library uh, let's let's first of all um to work with it we actually use the r part package which we're going to load and then we train the model just like we did earlier um, and then make predictions and calculate the root mean square error which you see here it's not it's a bit poor from before all right another type of algorithm regression algorithm that we can work with support vector machines um and to work with it um by the way before even going into working with it um this type of algorithm um or the models that we create from this type of algorithm um perform best when we have smaller data sets and again when we also have complex relationships like nonlinear relationships with our data set so to work with this type of algorithm we load the u1071 package um, and we load it as shown i had already loaded it earlier um, and then we um, train the model make predictions and calculate the root mean square error which you can see here uh, moving on this random forest which is another type of algorithm that now aggregates um, the predictions of multiple decision trees so when we use random forest it's um, that we are using multiple decision trees to be able to make our predictions and that results into to um, better predictive accuracy um, and and to work with this algorithm we normally use the random forest package which we can be able to import um, and and now we train our model we make predictions and calculate the root mean square error which you can see here um lastly we can also go further and um, um use what are called another type of um, um algorithm that um works by also using multiple um, um other multiple algorithms and um, what um, this type of algorithm which is called G G gbm or gradient boosting machines it what it does it sequentially minimizes the errors of um, multiple algorithms that it uses so in an effort in as a result of that you have a better performing uh, model so to you to work with gbm we import the gbm package we load it we train our model make predictions and calculate late the mean square error you can see we have 4384 which is quite good 
All right, so that's it with regards to regression algorithms. On this other side, where we want to create machine learning models that make um, some prediction, that is classification in nature, um, we can work with just classification algorithms. By the way, the regression algorithms are just a few. There are many, there are tens. Um, these are just a few to just help you see how we can be able to work with them. The same case with classification, we're only going to cover a few. So let's load the data set for classification. So we want to use this data set to um, predict job satisfaction. Um, um, we can pre-process the data set, um, drop the name column, and then create our training and test set, train and test set. All right, the first logist uh, classification algorithm is the logistic regression algorithm, which is the most basic form of algorithm. Um, when it comes to creating machine learning models for performing classification tasks. Um, and we normally use it when we are, um, um, we want to, 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 when we are working generally with um, um, two different classes, maybe you want to predict a yes or no, um, it usually works best in such a situation. And it also uses probability, which is usually easier to explain um, how the machine learning model um, um, arrived at the solution. So to work with this type of algorithm, we use the GLM function um, for training, and then we make predictions, and then we create a confusion matrix, which in our situation over here, we will get um, other different, other information um, pertaining to the performance of our model. So the confusion matrix is over here that we can be able to use to um, understand how the model performed, but this is the most straightforward um, performance um, metric, which is called the accuracy metric. So in our situation over here, um, our accuracy metric is 0 0.83, which means generally um, out of 10 records, um, eight it, um, were predicted correctly by the model. All right, um, moving on, support vector machines, which is also one of those algorithms that we get, got to learn about um, earlier. But now there's this type of, this algorithm, we can use it again for classification. Um, and we normally use it when Again, when our data set has complex relationships and we also have um, smaller data sets um, and um, we can be able to use it by simply loading the E1071 package and then training the model, making predictions and creating our confusion matrix as shown. So you can see 0 0.83 is also the outcome that we get. Lastly, um, random forest for classification. So we can also use random forest to perform classification tasks. So we just import the random forest, forest um, package, train our model, make predictions, and also um, print out our confusion matrix. So we have 0 0.75. Um, that's it about supervised learning, where we use a training data set to train our model. On the other hand, we can create a model that is able to make some predictions, like be able to group new points um, based on just whatever groups that um, it, it feels that it, it finds that would work best. So um, we're going to learn more about clustering, which is an unsupervised technique that allows us to group similar data points together. So um, we'll, first of all, load the necessary libraries, the Stidiverse, Carrot, and MLR. Then we load the um, data set that we're going to use to perform clustering on. So this is um, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using experience, years in current role and skills, um, and we're going to be grouping the data into just different clusters. Um, the same case with projects completed, so that we have different groups, um, which could also mean something. So we've loaded that. We can also specify the columns that we want for um, performing clustering, which are the ones that I've mentioned, and we also scale that particular data set so that the magnitude of just particular um, variables don't affect um, that clustering plus process. So we use the scale um, function for that. And we preview our data. So this is the data that we're going to use um, for that. Um, then we perform now k-means clustering and we define the number of um, clusters that we want, one to three. Then once we have done that, we create a new column where we specify which cluster um, each record belongs to, and then we preview the data. So for example, in our case, you can see this particular column, which is actually the first one here. We actually are working with that, um, um, belongs to cluster three, this cluster two, one. So this record number four, the fourth record and the first record are actually 
um, are much more closely um, related generally. And then we can preview um, our, uh, our clusters in a scatter plot to be able to see how they fare. So you can see yeah, the third cluster um, is, is, is positioned towards the bottom of years in current row. Um, furthermore, we can decide to create an elbow method uh, to perform uh, the elbow method to be able to determine the number of clusters. So let's run that um, to be able to plot that um, elbow um, method um, graph. And we can say that our plot, um, the number of um, plots would be um, much more um, around two. Two would work well. And again, we can always just um, go back and um, instead of specifying three, we set it to two. Lastly, PC is another type of technique that we can use to reduce the number of predictor variables that we have um, into what are called components. So it's just one of those um, techniques that we can perform when we have a lot, when we have lots of um, features, maybe hundreds, um, maybe we want to represent them into just um, 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 a smaller number of representatives that's easy to work with. So PC is one that we can be able to do that. We had already laid it, loaded our libraries. Um, so we'll just ignore that. Let's load the data set for that we're going to perform PCA on, which is this one. Um, then we create a pre-processing model that will ensure that our data set here um, is in the right format for performing PCA. And then once we have done that, so um, we'll create that pre-processing model and, um, and scale that data. And then we now apply um, PCA or perform PCA by using PR comp um, um, function and specify the columns um, of the data that we want. So can you even um, run that? Then we run that. And then we preview now the components, um, the reduced um, um, data. So we can use this for machine learning tasks. All right, so that's it. Um, hope you were able to learn a lot in, in that in this particular course. And um, if you want to continue learning, if you want to continue practicing, consider becoming an Afterwork member. We post such um, brief courses that help in the learning journey. Um, feel free to go back through the workbook, um, read the notes to just understand what's happening. All the best and see you in the next um, video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or even just subscribe um, to get notified when we post such future videos. Bye.